Hey righty then, ladies and gentlemen, this is Eugene Tay from Rock the Block Live. As promised, 2019, we will have lots of different video series for you. And the first one up is for eToro series. Uh, this is from our friends at eToro. And we want to find out a bit more about, well, making money. That's something that we are all really interested in. So the question I have for most of you guys watching uh, this video is, we know that there is something more to life than just a 9 to 5 job. Corporate grind and climbing up the ladder, putting your money in a, in a red tin can like what Aaron, my guest here, has done before. And the question is, how can we actually growth hack our finances? Uh, we talk about a lot about cryptocurrency in 2017, 2018. Uh, but again, with the bear market in 2018, most of you kind of got weak hands. And now the questions that you're asking me is, Eugene, do you have any other ideas? Anything, anything to propose to us that could help us improve our financial standing? And so the answer is yes. Right now, I have with me Aaron, who is an eToro trader. He does this full time right now. But of course, it didn't start off that way. We're going to find out a bit of background story from him and to see if such a platform really can turn your life around. I just want to mm -hmm. find out from you, how did all this started for you? No, well, it started when I first saw a newspaper article in 2016. I was 26 at a point of time. Mm. Uh, I was 26, felt like I was 6. <laughs> didn't really have my finances in, um, secured, you know. Yeah. All, all I had was that little red tin can you said. So I, I was reading really newspapers through and through and I saw this lady, she was 27. I've actually still been looking for the article, you know. She was telling people that she's 27. She grew up in this really rough, uh, she had a really rough childhood. She had to work a few jobs to support herself and her family. So at 27, she had um, insur she had insurance, she had bonds that were kind of had a 10 year maturity. She had a stock portfolio, she had savings, she had properties. And I was just looking there, I was thinking, she's 27, I'm 26. What am I doing with my life? You know, like what exactly am I doing, you know? So I was, think, I, was, I was thinking it through and I realized that, you know what, there's really nothing stopping me from being what she has, doing what she's, she's doing. So they actually started um, the search for any way I could participate in, you know, getting my finance secure at least, mm. you know. So I was working in British Council at a point of time when I told my friend that, my, I told my colleague that I was um, looking for a stockbroker, mm. you know, to participate, allow me participation in the stock markets. Uh, after a while, he told me about eToro. So I looked through it, I realized very importantly that um, eToro's graphic user interface, the, the GUI was very, very simple. Mm. I mean, I've looked at um, other brokers and the other brokers, they had a lot of data, a lot of uh, charts and things like that, a lot of statistics, which to me as a new participant in the market, I felt was really, really confusing because I didn't know what any of these charts meant. I didn't know what these numbers meant. They didn't really help that um, numbers were really small. Mm. I mean, and I'm four eyed, so that really didn't make things any better yeah. you know so uh i like eToro because it, it was simple mm. um and most importantly it was sociable you know you 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 could see what certain people were talking about certain things in the markets you could see how certain people interact uh, it's not always pleasant but mm. you could see i mean it, it's there okay. so um with that in mind what i actually did was i took the last if, if i recall correctly the last 400 dollars from my last paycheck in british council and put it all into the stock market and i was like you know what i'll just try this out and you'll see where it goes from here okay yeah but this is counterintuitive from what you advised me at the start of this conversation before we got into recording where mm -hmm. you said don't put your all your eggs in one basket <laughs> but here you go putting your last paycheck everything in well <laughs> a new platform that you just discovered well i mean i had savings my t little red tin can <laughs> so the sa the salary thing was, was was a whole different it's um, gonna be burned off anyway right four hundred dollars very that's quickly. true that's true really. yeah. yeah so because back, back back then i had a few spending habits you see mm. so Again, that, that, that's also one of the things that I like to talk about when it comes to building wealth is to not have all these um, silly ones. Sure, you have your, your needs, you know, you, have, you, you need to eat, you need to pay your rent, you have your bills, mm. but do you really need that $1,200 handbag? Mm. You know, do, you, do you really need that new upgrade for your car? Do you really need that new game? You know, and, and putting off this instant gratification is what I believe is one of the core fundamentals of um, getting your finances in order and actually making money mm. because you can't make money if you're hemorrhaging money at the back end you know so yeah yeah are you any good in mathematics most people think that as a trader you should be good in math or you should understand the charts and the, the candlesticks <laughs> well okay F firstly i'm an investor so i don't really understand the charts and candlesticks except 
they look pretty. That that that's about it. You know? okay. I, mean, I see people di- discussing the charts, and mm. if that's how you want to go about doing it, you know, all the all the more respect to you. But personally, I don't use them. Mm. And as for the maths question, it's ironic because when I was in primary school, so we have, in fact, when I was in primary school, all the way to poly, so <laughs> we are talking about um, quite a large chunk of my life. <laughs> yeah. I feel man, like I don't. I, I I couldn't for the life of me because numbers felt so boring, so cut and dry, you know, and, and, and I've heard some people say numbers are like the closest we can get to the handwriting of God. I'm like, yeah, sure. You know. <laughs> if that's how you want to go about doing it, sure. It's it's dry for me. I'm not gonna but you know take part in it and yeah. yet here we are. <laughs> I like to think that my math has improved. I mean I can count, you know, one, <laughs> two, four, I mean three, you know, so so yeah. there's hope for people out there who uh, are failing mathematics and thinking that you know making money on the markets, stock markets, isn't a thing for you. Hey, you know what? Uh, here's a living proof that you can actually <laughs> do it. Now, uh, the thing is, you mentioned uh, investor. Mm-hmm. So for most of us who are not aware, uh, mm-hmm. we call you guys trader. Like mm-hmm. when I look at eToro platform, I always identify the people who are eToro as traders. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is the main difference there? Well, I think the main difference here would be the time frame that the individual actually holds on to any asset that they buy. Mm. So for instance, traders, um, they, they perhaps they hold certain assets for a few hours, few days, mm. a few minutes, perhaps even a few seconds. You know, I've, I've seen people slinging stocks on the market. Okay. When, when the market starts flashing, people buy the stock, five seconds later, they sell it. You know, and, and I mean, if that's a way you want to make money, again, it's mm. up to you. But an investor studies the fundamentals, remember the basics of the stock, and understands that the stock is not just a ticker symbol. It, it's, it's, for instance, if you buy Disney, mm. you're not just buying you know, an e-share. You know, you're actually buying a share in that business. Mm. You know, you're actually buying a share in Disney, this whole corporation that is Disney. Yeah. So what you want to be doing is to study the fundamentals of the business, study Disney's business model, make sure you understand who's running this company mm. and how well you understand it. And of course, the most important thing here, the most important step is to make sure that you're not wrong. Because like um, there was this quote, often, contri- often attributed to Mark Twain, that says that, you know, it's not the things that we, kn- that we don't know that gets us into trouble. It's the things that we know for sure that just ain't so. You know, and Charlie Munger substantiates this by saying that the first question you ask yourself is, am I an idiot? <laughs> and really, that's when it comes to investing and studying the markets, the first thing, so understand the company, and then ask yourself, how can I go wrong? Am I being an idiot in thinking this? This is extremely relevant to most our to most of our viewers out there who I believe on Rock the Block Live. You guys are in the crypto scene, uh, so this should be a main question that most of us should ask ourselves, myself included. I have got gotten burned for a few times. It's like, am I an idiot doing this? Because most times we do our research and we think we are we are correct. But you never know. So is that something you do full time, like just research and? Yes, correct. Um, the first thing I actually do to research, contrary to what most most people, they want research that backs up their perspectives. But what I'm looking for is evidence that refutes my perspective, because you want to know where you could possibly go wrong. There's no sense in understanding where you're right, you know, because then it um, pushes you into this cocoon of um, this of of um, of a certain. Rose colored, rose tinted lens. So you you just, know? It's, del- it's like a self delusion. Correct, correct. Perpetuate. You start to think that you're right, you're, you're right. If everybody tells you you're right, you, the tendency is to believe that, yep, you're right. Without actually considering that, wait, 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 wait. There's evidence out there that tells me I'm wrong. This is bullshit. I'm being an idiot. But Empress <laughs> New Clothes. Yes, correct. That's <laughs> correct, correct. You know, so you need someone who tells yeah. you, wait, you're naked, <laughs> right? But unfortunately. And oftentimes it's not easy to hear that. Correct. It's the most, but it's the best thing to hear, you know. It's like, um, I remember there was this quote on, uh, was it, what was it called? The Big Shot. There was this mm. quote, uh, they said that it was overheard in a bar in 2008. They say that um, truth is like poetry. The thing is, most people hate poetry. So if you're just looking at long term investment hole, um, you obviously do the research on behalf of people who follow you. And I understand that eToro, you mentioned as a social platform. Can you just briefly Correct. tell me what's the difference between, say, traditional trading platform and a social trading platform? Well, I can't really say that um, I know the difference because eToro was the first and only um, platform that I've been on. Mm. I've, I mean, I've looked at the rest. Um, but I guess as a comm student myself, the social aspect would be that people get to interact with you mm. directly. You know, um, they get to know your opinions. They get to give you feedback 
uh, sometimes not always positive. <laughs> but that's part of what you know social media is, right? Yeah. So to me, it's amazing because what Itoro has done, it has actually married the fundamentals and tenets of capitalism into uh, investing and trading, into this in activity of investing and trading. You know, on Itoro, if you perform well people will come to you. Mm. If they don't like what you do, they just go somewhere else. And that's essentially what it's like in a capitalistic economy as well, right? That's if true. You're, if you have a good product, people want. You know, if you don't, then people just go and find somewhere else, right? So yeah. So what are your top three stocks that uh, you would recommend on eToro? Well, um, generally speaking, I don't make any stock recommendations mm. because um, I feel that people should invest mm. in a company that they actually understand. Mm. So there is really no point in listening to what someone might recommend because you know, for even if I like to be right, I might be wrong. You know? mm. And again, yeah, you might not exactly agree with that person's perspective. So I always believe in independent thought mm. to actually do your own research mm. to make sure that you, your research is right and then make that investment. Okay, that's a very fair point. Okay. Maybe let's take that question in another okay, direction sure, sure. then. What would be your personal ad advice, the, the things that you will look out for. So you mentioned mm -hmm. about do your own research correct, and every, every, every investment that you make is mm -hmm. very subjective and it's very true. Uh, but for those of us who are new in this scene, mm -hmm. can you give us a heads up? What are the three things we should look out for as we are doing our research? What, uh, what you should look out for is a business with a competitive, sustainable competitive advantage. So these can come in a few forms. Mm -hmm. For instance, uh, economies of scale. Economies of scale means um, how much a uh, company can produce mm -hmm. in large scale you know so for instance uh, Procter & Gamble and the amount of products they have under their brand uh, uh, say maybe Apple that's the branding power there um, Apple to a certain extent owns a piece of the consumer's mind mm. so when you think of phones some people most people I think some or majority of them would think of Apple right uh, when you think of childhood entertainment Disney mm. right um, and how you know that a brand has a occupies or rather owns a piece of the consumer's mind is if that brand comes to mind when you talk about something mm. right so for instance if i told you coca-cola you understand you there there is yeah. a certain image that flashes in your mind mm. straight away but if i told you dr pepper not maybe not for the asian market <laughs> <laughs> yeah. exactly yeah. so you can see that coca-cola owns a piece of the consumer's yeah. mind right if i told you disney there is that Definitely. magical feeling but if i told you nickelodeon Mm, yeah, like not sure, sure Nickelodeon, yeah. but come on Disney yeah. right so I'm looking for that sustainable competitive advantage secondly I'm looking for people I'm looking to the people who run the company mm. right whether um, their, their experience the kind of people they are mm. their personalities uh, how long they, of course um, how long they've been actually running and what um, how they actually got there you know um, I'm also looking for companies that um, have lasted through the test of time. So for, for instance, one of the ways I look at a company's strength and tenacity is to take a look at how they perform in the in crisis, times of crisis. Mm. So for, for instance, uh, companies that, and this is one of the things that I, I look for, this is one of the things, uh, is I look for companies that perform well despite the Asian financial, despite the housing market crisis in 07 to 09. Because if these companies perform well in a crisis, chances are there is something about them that um, requires more investigating mm -hmm. into as to how they actually did it. They're more resilient to market movement. Correct. And 2018 is a bear, was a bear market. Still, really still kind of bearish, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, stock markets were down, mm -hmm. uh, crypto was bloody, uh, even price of gold and silver were tanking. Uh, how, how, what's your take on that? How, like, how did your portfolio perform? Because you were looking for stable, resilient mm -hmm. products. Um, companies. Correct. Well, my portfolio took a hit. I mean, as long as you are invested in the market, any part market participant would definitely take a hit when the markets go down. Mm -hmm. uh, unless, of course, you are doing something on your end or maybe pulling an end on you know, mm -hmm. creative accounting. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I took a hit. But what I did when the markets went down was I kept buying stock because I like buying stocks. You know, I like buying them when they are cheaper. Mm -hmm. You know, like what Buffett said. You know, in the Buffett household. Let's say, assuming you can eat hamburgers for the rest of your mm. life, you sing the hallelujah song when, ham when the price of hamburgers go down. And if you know that that hamburger is a damn good one, you know, why not buy it at yeah. cheaper? You know? 
at a cheaper price. You know, right? I, I had the same mentality as well. I buy it when they said buy it on the dip. Correct, correct. But unfortunately, when it comes to crypto, the dipping never ends. So I keep buying on the dip. I average <laughs> down. <laughs> it's like what the hell? No, that that's something I think a lot of people also do. Mm. And if you do believe in that asset, you know, by all means, I yeah. mean. But again, it it hinges on what you believe in that asset. Mm. You know, when when it comes to the crypto space, for me, um. I've told some people that I don't invest in crypto because of the volatility, right? But don't get me wrong, I do believe in blockchain technology. It's an amazing technology. I mean, a public ledger that mm. is maintained by everyone, you know, um, promotes transparency. And transp- I am very big on transparency when it comes to my portfolio as well. So, yeah. I know, and you know as well that we cannot predict the future. Okay. But this doesn't uh, stop people from asking the same question and everybody <laughs> loves this is what do you think 2019 is going to be coming from an expert with 33,000 followers we want to know what you think is going to be no, and personal I, opinion I'm sure that I'm, I'm, I'm not really an expert I'm sure there are people out there who are better than me um, my personal opinion is that very practically speaking is that the only prediction I have is that the market will always remain inconsistent <laughs> that's <laughs> That's every time someone someone asks me for a prediction, they don't think it's helpful. But the way I see it is, I'm not trying to be helpful. I mean, I'm trying to help you, yes, but I'm also trying to be very practical. Look, I don't have a crystal ball. If I had a crystal ball, I wouldn't have thirty-three thousand followers. I mean, I would probably have thirty-three million. I mean, this is a guy who can bring the market hundred percent success rate. I want to be <laughs> part of it, man. Yeah, you know, but but I don't and. I don't believe anyone does that either, right? Mm. Sure, some some people get it right, some people get it wrong. The way I see it, like what Benjamin Graham said, you have your op- option of flipping a coin and taking the consensus of market experts, yeah. and chances are you're gonna be you're, you're gonna have the same amount of you know of chances of, of being yeah, right, yeah, you know, 50-50. Yeah. So the way I see it is the only consistent thing about the market is its inconsistency, and my advice is to just go with the flow, mm. adapt, and I think most importantly is to develop the stomach for investing because the investing business is more about temperament than intellect you know um i've observed these three years that i've been investing i've observed that um there are a lot of people with very high intellect you know iq uh, participating in the market Mm. but more often than not this high iq is actually what gets them in trouble you know because um again the, the investing business is not about intellect it's about your temperament it's about your stomach how mm. much can you take how much of a loss are you willing to take mm. you know in order for the promise of future gains how much faith i guess to a certain extent you have in your own decisions you know how much independence of thought do you have in your thought processes yeah okay so these are five of my role models actually all five of them are my role models um, each of them actually represents a certain trait which i admire that i want for myself so for instance, Warren Buffett is his humility. I mean, this is a guy that's worth currently as of now 80 billion. And look at the way he lives, he's so humble, you know, he has somewhat of a minimalistic lifestyle, I guess. No matter what you do, you don't um, increase your standard of living. Just keep within your means, um, keep within the, the level of comfort that you want, and that's it. You know, as for Charlie Munger, now this is very important, Char- Charlie Munger greatly influenced my decision-making process. He's the one that actually set me on the path of um, learning from different schools of thought, learning from different fields of expertise, specialities. Um, so for instance, psychology, mathematics, um, science, physics, um, economics, and things like that. And his idea is that you should mesh them together because all of the world's knowledge isn't found in one field. You need to look for the interconnective um, tissue between these fields of study and employ all these mental models at the same time. And it takes a lot of effort to think that way, you know, because most people, um, they like to commit to a certain decision. People don't like to think. Science has shown that um, around two-thirds of men and one-third of women would rather, would never, would rather get an electric shock than to actually be alone in a room with their thoughts, you know. So, but the investing game is a lot about thinking and thinking in a multi, uh, in a lattice work of mental models is what Charlie Munger has taught me. Bill Gates has taught me um, kindness. I mean, it's, um, it's amazing what um, both Bill Gates and Elon Musk have actually done, you know. Mm-hmm. And they've actually used their personal fortunes to forward humanity a few steps forward. I mean, look, look at what Bill Gates has done. He has given so much of his net worth to various charities. Yeah. And that is something that I hope that this company that I've set up, Elderick, would actually um, strive towards as well. It's something that I'm currently building up a, a, a charity. 
um, Elon Musk as well. But what I really admire about Elon Musk is his drive. I mean, if you were to look, uh, read through his biography, you know, Elon Musk, the biography by Ashley Vance, if I'm not wrong, it describes how Elon Musk actually founded SpaceX and how he invested in Tesla and then became the CEO of Tesla. And the amount of struggles he actually had to go through back during the PayPal days. You know, and if you look at this guy, you realize that this guy has an exceeding amount of drive that regardless of any circumstances, regardless of how much pressure, this guy just goes through. You know, and it, it's not just his genius, it's not just his smarts. He also has that um, grit. You need to keep going at it, yeah. even if you fail. If it's some, like what I said, if something is important enough, you, know, you, you, you should never give up. Just keep going at it. Pick yourself up, keep going. Which, by the way, is what uh, Manga has said. So as you can see, there, there, is, there is a linkage between all five of them. Now, Kevin O'Leary is a very interesting one because Kevin O'Leary is the star of Dragon's Den and Shark yeah, Steel, right? Man. Correct. He's not someone that a lot of people would know, but I admire him because the first book which I read on throughout my whole long list was this book called The Whole Heart Truth for Woman, Money, Woman, Men and Money. You know, he okay, a lot of people will say it's so mercenary, you know, but it's practical advice. It's what you need to actually start on your financial security, you see. So I really respect Kevin O'Leary for being the mercenary. He is. <laughs> but that's what business is. Yeah, yeah so yeah. So these are all my and you have your New York Times, Wall Street Journal. Yes, um, this is what we call, or what Warren Buffett likes to call, instructive art. You know, these are times whereby the market has taken a very big hit. You get to observe um, human nature at its best. You get to observe the panic in the markets. So like, so like Buffett, I basically stick it up to remind myself just how bad things can actually get in the markets and to always be prepared. You know, so yeah. Uh, but I think the biggest takeaway I have with regards to answering the question of what's going to happen in 2019 and what to invest in is really when Aaron said, I don't do anything that keeps me awake at night. So if you have done something that keeps you awake at night, now that answers the am I an idiot question. <laughs> right? So hopefully you guys will trade wisely this year and may you all make a lot of money. And um, you know, if you, if you do, do leave us a comment, sh uh, share your thoughts. If you have any advice for other people watching this video, well, leave it in a comment below as well. Before we say goodbye, Aaron, uh, perhaps you could look at our audience and uh, if you could have a 30 seconds time frame to tell us whatever advice you want to give us that time is yours well like i said and if you choose to participate in the markets remember to keep your emotions under control and regardless of whatever happens in the markets be sure to never lose your rationality because rationality is one of the things one of the core um or rather one of the foundations of being of what being a successful investor is about and also one of the other ingredients the key ingredient especially and i cannot stress this enough is patience. Um, it's in dwindling supply, but it's important to have extreme patience in the market and really in whatever you do as well. Yeah. Thank you very much, Aaron. Pleasure. <laughs> Hi, I'm Aaron Reed, uh, a popular investor from eToro, and you're watching me on Rock the Blog Live.